Ah, finally, your porcelain piggy is filled up with cash and you're ready to smash it open. You've got money and you got your eyes aimed at your favorite camera. But hold up, don't hit that purchase button just yet because Jordy is here to save you from that bad decision. Or if you've already bought a new camera, well then I'm here to make you feel bad. Because what I have for you today are 9 things that you should think about before buying your first camera. Say you have a budget of $2000, a tiny little portion should go to Skillshare to a sponsor but more about them soon. As for the rest, it means that you can spend about $500 on a camera body. Ah, that's a bummer. You see, the camera body is just one piece of your camera setup. There's also the lens, a rig, a tripod, lights, audio and more. At first you think you don't need those, but you really do. And the fun part is that the camera body is the first thing you're probably gonna replace. It's that piece of electronics which gets obsolete very quickly. But your lenses, rig, support, even lights and audio can last a lifetime if you take care of it. And that's why I strongly advise to get a cheap camera if it's your first one. Later in your career you can always upgrade to a more expensive body and you'll already have all the accessories around it. And now that your budget for a new camera has shrunk a lot, you're gonna have to do your research again. What camera do you get? Yet. Of course, you want something with clean HDMI out, 10 bit recording and 120 frames at 4K resolution. But do you actually need those options? I mean, oftentimes when a low budget camera has such amazing options, it lacks other features to make up for it. Oftentimes other features that are very important. Like you have no idea how important ergonomics are. The simplest thing like a flip screen is gonna make you love or hate your camera. And if you decide to work with an external monitor, having a full HDMI port is mandatory. Those micro or whatever tiny little HDMI ports are gonna break very easy. Do you need image stabilization or not? Think about the features that you actually need. Image quality is not everything. Now I've already talked about how your camera body is gonna be the first thing that you're gonna change and that your rig and lenses and all could stick around for a lifetime. So that's something to keep in mind. What lenses are you gonna buy and can you easily adapt them to future cameras? For instance, almost every camera body supports Canon lenses usually through an adapter, because a Bronica ETR mount is something you don't hear much about, so it's unlikely you can ever find an adapter for it. But apart from the mount, there's also the lens coverage. There are many different sensor sizes, but generally we can split them up into three categories, full frame, super 35 and micro four thirds. Now there are lenses for each sensor size, but keep in mind that they do not fit on larger sensor sizes, they do on smaller ones though. When putting a super 35 lens on a full frame camera, you start to see heavy vignetting. So if you decide to buy a micro four thirds camera, do not buy a lens set to cover that sensor size if you want to use your lenses for the future as well on other cameras. Now it all depends on your budget and your preference of course, but I just want you to keep this in mind when making a purchase decision. Now a brand new camera is not gonna make you a better filmmaker, it's all about the person behind the camera and the perfect place to learn everything about the craft is Skillshare. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video and you can actually find various filmmaking classes from myself such as this one about cinematic composition which you can follow along using any kind of camera. We've been receiving tremendously positive reviews on it so I'm sure you're gonna like it as well. But of course apart from our classes there's a whole learning community where you can discover thousands of other inspiring classes and explore new skills. Now one of the recent classes that I've been following is about powerful storytelling and strategies for crafting great content by Soledad O'Brien. Now she's been a journalist for more than 30 years and share some really good tips on how to tell a good story through an interview with someone. I remember when I started out there was never budget for an interviewer, so I had to control the camera and ask the questions at the same time. And I really wish that I've seen this class earlier as I learned a ton of new valuable tips about preparation, how to lead an interview and structure the answers. So I can definitely recommend this class and on Skillshare you can easily find a bunch of other classes per topic as well such as for filmmaking and then you can fine tune your search even more to learn more about let's say cinematography. Now most classes are pretty short so I can just watch them during lunch or in the evening and learn some new tips and tricks that I can use in my creative work. There are no ads as it's specifically created for learning and Skillshare is always launching new premium classes so that you can keep filling your creativity and get inspired. Now the first 1000 people to use the link in my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium. So start exploring right now and maybe I'll see you in one of my classes too. So check that out and now let's move 
move on to the next thing to keep in mind and that is brand compatibility. Now it used to be that you can just pick out one brand like Canon and join their ecosystem with buying compatible products. But today the markets have changed a lot and we see new camera brands popping up everywhere. We got Blackmagic, Kinefinity, Zcam and so much more. So even if you choose to buy a let's say Sony body right now, you might get a different brand in the future. So never buy brand specific accessories. And I'm thinking about the audio unit that was specifically built for the Panasonic GH5. It's very nice, but it's specific to your brand or camera model. So I suggest you only buy universal accessories that can be used with other brands in the future as well. Next up is the codec in which the camera records. More and more of these new bodies these days record an H265. It has the advantage of giving good image quality within a small file size. However, it's a pain in the butt to edit with. It's considered a heavy codec that Premiere Pro is going to struggle with a lot. So you're gonna have to convert all of your footage in something like ProRes. Now it's oftentimes a misconception that the bigger the file size is, the more trouble you have to edit with. But that's absolutely not true. Your computer struggles with the codec, not the file size. And ProRes is a light codec as well as some raw formats like the Red Records in. So if time is an issue for the work you do, then keep in mind to find a camera that captures in a lighter codec so you don't lose time converting. Number six on the list is something you might not want to hear, but maybe you shouldn't buy a camera just yet. If your budget is so tight that you can only look at cameras that are worse than your phone, well, maybe you should start off making videos with your phone. Start with buying a good microphone and some lights and your videos will already be better. Your phone is a great way to learn about filmmaking before spending the big money on it. But let's assume that you do have more budget than a phone, then is it gonna be an SLR, more of a video camera type form factor? or a cinema camera. You know, SLRs have great versatility. You can find many aftermarket accessories, you can easily adapt different lenses to it, and usually the image quality is pretty good. However, it lacks ergonomics, connections, and features, and that's where camcorders stand out with. These usually come with dedicated audio controls, good ergonomics, and easy to handle. Image quality is usually not that great, and that's because it's considered very video-ish. As with SLRs, they tend to look more like cinema cameras, which is because because of the bigger sensors and the fast lenses that you can adapt to it. Cinema cameras are very expensive and I would never recommend anyone buying one as your first. I mean, it's like learning how to drive in a super expensive car. We all know how that ends up. Now, these cameras don't come with many features, like image stabilization, a flip screen, or even ergonomics. I mean, the RET is literally a cube that you can't even use. <laughs> if you want a monitor, you're gonna have to buy one separate. Basically, you build out these cameras to your needs and how you're gonna use them. And the cost adds up quickly. So if you wanna get that cinematic look, the SLR is your best choice. If you need to produce video quickly and efficient, such as news, then a camcorder is recommended. Now, there are many hybrids these days as well like the Canon C series, giving you the best of both worlds. Now these are typically very expensive too, but maybe you can find one second hand? And talking about my second hand, that's something that you should consider as well. Just make sure to inspect the camera body properly first, as you never know how it's been treated. But tips on how to buy second hand gear is a different video. If you do have your eyes on a full frame camera with high dynamic range, you'll be slapped in the face with its expensive price. So that's a good reason to buy a second hand. Or maybe you're not really sure yet what kind of camera that you want to get. Then buy one second hand, perhaps an older model, and it gives you the time to experience a camera type without spending too much money on it. If you like it, then you can buy the newest model of that kind of camera. If you don't like it, you buy something different after some time. Because like I said before, there's a whole lot more where your budget goes to. So that second hand camera body might be a good idea. And that brings me to the last thing that you should consider before buying your first camera. Don't buy the latest model of a camera. When a new camera gets released, it's oftentimes expensive. Now, that same camera has usually a big discount when a new model gets released. I'm gonna take the Canon C series as an example again. When the Canon C700 came out, it costed about 30,000 bucks. The camera is about three years old now and newer models have come out, but it's still an amazing camera that you're going to enjoy for many years to come. And today you can get one for 10 grand. That's one third of the price. And this happens with almost 
every camera model. The famous Sony Alpha series are at Mark 4 or 5 or something already. Well, the Mark 2 or 3 is still an amazing camera and it's been reduced in price a lot. And those were my 9 tips which I hope are gonna help you make that choice better. Now check out the video here on my left where you can learn how to light an entire scene using only one light. So you can save some money there as well. Big thanks for watching guys. Thank you Skillshare for the support. Definitely check out the link in the description down below and as always, stay creative.